In this video, we'll look at a combination of transformations. First, let's summarize the transformations we've learned. We've learned about vertical shifts that come about by adding or subtracting a number from the outside of a function. And if we add a number, that moves the graph up k units. If we subtract a number k, the graph goes down k units. We've learned about horizontal shifts which arise from a number added or subtracted from the inside of a function. So if that number is a positive number and we're adding it to the x, we shift the graph left h units. If the function is obtained by subtracting h from the input, we shift the graph of the original function right h units. We also learned about vertical stretches and vertical shrinks. Those are defined by multiplying the function by a number that's either greater than 1 to produce a stretch or between 0 and 1 to produce the shrink. Then lastly, we learned about reflections and those arise from taking either the opposite of the function or inputting the opposite of the x value. If the opposite is on the outside, then we do a vertical reflection across the x-axis. If the opposite is on the inside, that produces a horizontal reflection across the y-axis. It's important to note what's changing through these transformations. Are we impacting the output or impacting the input? Because what happens is when you combine transformations, the order that you perform those transformations matter. We need to perform inside changes first, things like shifting left and right or reflecting across the y-axis. Then we perform the outside changes, which are reflecting across the x-axis, stretches and shrinks, and vertical shifts. Let's look at an example. And the goal in these problems is, again, that certainly you could pick up your calculator and plug this in. That's not what this is about. The goal is to be able to look at the function, identify what the parent function is, and identify what are the transformations to that parent function. We have a function g of x, which is equal to x plus 1 squared minus 4. So if we take away the plus 1 and the minus 4, our parent function is f of x is equal to x squared. Again, you should know some basic points on the graph of that parabola. We know if we plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and square each of those, we get 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4, respectively. The function g, though, notice that it has an inside change and an outside change. Remember that the inside change means that we're going to shift the graph of f left one unit because we think of what number makes that inner expression zero, and that is negative one, so that tells us we're going to shift it left one unit. And then the minus four on the outside tells us that that is a vertical shift of the original function down four units. So thinking about the graph of the original function, which I've sketched roughly here, to get our new function, we will shift each of the points on this basic function, left one and down four. So the origin shifted left one and down four takes us to negative one, negative four. We shift negative 1, 1, left 1, and down 4. Takes us to the point negative 2, negative 3. Negative 2, 4 shifted left 1 and down 4. Takes us to the point negative 3, 0. 1, 1, left 1 and down 4. Takes us to the point 0, negative 3. And then 2, 4 goes left 1 and down 4, which is to the point 1, 0. So then we can graph the graph of g 
through those points and see that this is a rigid transformation. The original function shape is not changed, but it has been picked up and we've shifted it left one and down four units. And what about the graph of g of x, which is equal to one half times x plus two squared? We have two different transformations. Our basic function is still x squared. The one half is a shrink factor, right? It's going to vertically shrink the graph by a factor of one half. The inside x plus two means that we're going to shift the graph left two units. So again, if you need to think about what the basic points are, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, so or square those, we get four, one, zero, one, and four. So again, that basic parabola, my goal for you is that you would not have to really think about this. You can just go straight to the graph. But now let's think about what happens here. We have to do the changes to x first. So we need to shift the graph left two, and then we're going to multiply the y values by one half. So zero, zero, shift to left two, but then if we multiply the y value of zero by one half, we stay at zero. So we go to negative two, zero. Negative one, one, shift to left two, is, takes us to the x value of negative three, but we have to multiply that y value by one half, which takes us to negative three, one half. Negative two, four, shift to left two, takes us to the x value of negative four, but then we have to multiply the y value by one half. So one half of four is two. One, one, shift to left two, but then we multiply the y value by one half, takes us to negative one, one half. And then two, four, shift to left two, and then multiply the y value by one half, which takes us to zero, two. And so we see that compression that we knew was going to take place. So we have a shift left by two and a compression or a shrink by a factor of one half. So those are the things you'd have to be able to do. Tell me what the transformations are and then perform them in the correct order. Our last example, g of x is equal to the square root of negative x minus one. So our original parent function is the square root of x. And again, if you need to make a chart for the square root of x, if we plug in zero, one, and four, the square root of those numbers is zero, one, and two. So plotting those, zero, zero, one, one, and four, two. We see the half parabola. Now, what is the transformations for this particular function? The negative on the x means to do what? Yeah, the opposite of x occurs across the y, right? That's taking a horizontal reflection. So this is a reflection across y. And then minus one, that is a shift right one unit. So I have to perform the shifting left or right first before I take the reflection. So I'm gonna do this one in two steps. I'm gonna shift each of the points on this basic half parabola one unit to the right. So zero, zero takes me to the point one, zero. One, one, if I shift right, takes me to two, one. And then four, two, shifted right, one is five, two. So this is just a graph of the square root of x minus one. Now I need to reflect 
this graph across the y-axis. So remember what happens here to reflect across the y-axis, the x values have to be opposite, but the y values stay the same. So this point 1, 0 now will become negative 1, 0. My point 2, 1 is going to become negative 2, 1. And my point 5, 2 will be negative 5, 2. And so now I can draw the parabola, half parabola, through these points. So notice how my graph shifted right one unit, and then it had to reflect across the y-axis. Another thing that you can do to check is check your domain, especially with the square root function. I know that negative x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So that tells me that negative x has to be greater than or equal to 1. If I divide each side by negative 1, x has to be less than or equal to negative 1. So the graph can only take place to values which are left of negative 1, left of and including negative 1, which is what happens on this piece of the graph. So let me know if you have any questions with this topic. Thank you.